Hey folks, I've been cutting up uh, chartreuse. Again, in this video, I've got plenty of leftovers because I've been making this color. That's why I had the baits with me. I told you I don't carry everything I make with me. I don't have enough room to do that. And what I do is I throw like 10 colors I think I might fish with in the boat. And most of the time, I get them right here off this table. I got a table here behind me. Uh, is is baits. Uh, they're seconds, okay? And I got a few different colors here. Sometimes they're the first pour or be like this one. Grub's got, it's got too much pearl on the top, you know, and I fish with those a lot. And uh, in this video, you're going to see that because I they was the baits didn't come out, the tails didn't come out the way I want them to, because I didn't shoot it hot enough. So instead of throwing them away, I just fished with them. And when you do that, as you're seeing a little bit, you don't get a good bite on the tail, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I've been making this color, so I've got plenty. It's a jour body, and I got plenty of it too. And this is the chartreuse for the tails. Again, you need to try to use this up all you can because there's so much waste in bait making anyway. Let me cook this up and I'll show you how we're going to shoot the tails. Alright folks, I got it cooked. I went through the vacuum chamber. Y'all have seen me do that the, last, the last, uh, last time. So I ran it through the vacuum chamber and cleaned it up. I don't see how people, and I watch folks on YouTube, same as y'all do, and uh, I don't see how people do that. Um, make baits without a vacuum chamber because when you let plastic set out how many times have y'all opened a 3600 with ba and you got individual baits laying in it and you touch one of them you go oh it's wet or it's water you actually can see the water especially like in bass baits big as they are and you got them in your boat and it's been a couple weeks or a month since you opened it and you get an open one up sometimes you can see the water on the leads of the 3600 this plastic has a tendency to draw moisture. Okay, I was gonna fill that back up. I don't need to. I just need the tails. I don't know what I'm thinking about. I'm trying to make it right. You get used to having it doing something right, don't you? Um, so, and I hear these guys on YouTube, and they go like, "Yeah, we're just using these used baits," and they pull them out of the microwave. Some of them take a torch on top, and that takes a lot of them off. That's better than nothing. It really is. But a vacuum chamber is about hundred and fifty dollars. You put it in there, and it sucks all that stuff out of it. It just bubbles in like it's boiling, as y'all have seen, and it cleans it up. Just, hey, can't beat it. All right, folks, what I usually do is I cut tails and I keep them in this container, okay? But since we're going to use all these tails right away, I'm just going to drop them on top of it. What I do is I take a pair of scissors. Yep, I don't have a tail mold for this. This I'm making my own tails. So if a very little bit, when you buy them, you go like, one's a little longer. It very well could be. I'm cutting them right there. I'm, I'm leaving enough because you got to get a bite with the other color. When you pour that other color in there, you want to get a bite. So you need to leave some to, for it to get a bite to. If you if you cut them off right here at the tail, there's not enough plastic if you cut off right there. Okay. Now, after I cut them all off, I'm, let me hurry up here. I think I got them all. One more. I'm trying to make this part here as short as I can. This is why my videos get so long. I can remelt that. That's how I get so much remelt. Here's the mold. All right. All right, I'm trying to balance it here and everything. Got me out of balance. All right, I'm just going to lay it. I'm going to do two of them real fast. Now, I put some oil on this. This is oil. Guys, it's vegetable oil. I'm going to add that. I was watching somebody last night, and they were talking about worm oil, worm oil. And one guy said something. And I watched somebody the other day, and he said, oh, you can use Pam. Yeah, this is Crisco. Yeah, I've been using That's why I spray in my injectors. Worm oil is expensive. This stuff's cheap. And I buy vegetable oil, the cheapest I can buy in the grocery store, a couple dollars a bottle. I've bought one bottle I've used all year. I had not used it all yet. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper. And it works just as good and it doesn't affect the baits. You put them all in like that. I, put, I just rubbed a little, just enough to make it slimy. Just enough to make it slick. Okay, that's what I've done on here. And then, see it? They're easy to move. You put them right in place, put them where you want them. All right? Now I'm going to put them all in, both molds. And then I'm going to heat up the azure color. I already got the cup back here chopped up. And then we're going to shoot the azure color. Okay? I needed a, at least 345, 350, or it will not adhere to those tails. They, it's got to be hot enough so it melts a little bit to get a bite. And still, I have many people told me that also that make baits. They said they hate making tail uh, uh, baits. 
because they come off. I said, yeah, they will. I bought some from Berkeley Power Baits. Yep. Uh, I used to, when I was bass fishing a lot, I was buying them by the hundreds. We got a hot enough that time. I, I gave it 12 more seconds. I was buying them by the hundreds, okay? Berkeley Power Baits when I was bass fishing and guiding for bass a lot. And uh, one time I hadn't gotten to the bags a lot and they was plucking seed chartreuse tail. Here we go. And uh, I hadn't got into the bags uh, a whole lot. And uh, when I got my bag back out, I got a cabinet that I just keep baits in, guys, believe it or not, in my basement. When I, when I got them out to, uh, to restock my tackle box, uh, then like I said earlier, I kept them in a 3600. And I had like nine colors in there. But uh, pumpkin seed, chartreuse tail, all the tails, most of the tails in the bag had separated. Yep, the, the tails had fell off of the worms and I hadn't even used them. They were still in the original bag. Yep, and I'm like, what? And I had the watermelon chartreuse tail. That's what I used to use. Pumpkin seed, green pumpkin, uh, green pumpkin chartreuse tail. But the four inch power worms on the mojo rig, I know some of y'all going like, what? A mojo rig on this lake, very hard to beat. All right, guys, let that cool, and we're opening. All right, guys, let's open this mose. I'm trying to talk loud enough for y'all can hear me. I got two fans running, one to the left and one to the right. It's hot in here. I took hot shot in here. I'll go these shot the wall, and just see what it's going to be. 90.5. Yeah. I got fans. I got an air conditioner. I had it running one of the other videos, and, had the heart, and it would make so much noise. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to run it. Are you ready? Cause we're almost done. Bam! All right, they're pretty, aren't they? Nice right, pulling out there. Yep. Now you can see right here. See how the tail? You see, you can see that melted together. That's what you want. Look here. Here's one didn't take. What happens sometimes, guys? Yep. That's why I tell y'all when I shoot these small molds, I only make 20 at a time. It takes a while. It takes a while. I can reuse that tail. Uh, that's why I love the LC Shad. I make 96 at a time. What a difference, right? What happens when you put these tails in this mold? See, there's there's another one. Didn't, didn't take. The plastic didn't get to it. Look. See them little lines on there? I'm going to look them back to the camera, guys. So I can, if y'all can see, the camera goes to sleep on me. See them little air? Those, those are vents. So when you shoot plastic down this runner, the air goes out there. Well, when I put these tails in there like that, it stops the airflow, guys. That's what happens. That's why it does that. All right. That's why, I, oh, I found another one on this one. So I didn't get but eight on that one. Bam. All right. So on this one, I got nine. And see, that's, that's y'all have heard me say this about the small baits. I like these small baits. But I, like I said, I struggle with these small bait molds doing stuff like this. Now, if you just shoot it one solid color, it's not too bad. Again, that's why I don't make a lot of dual colors and stuff in these bait molds, in the small ones. They just don't shoot as good. That's a pretty bait, though. That's why I shot these first, too. So I get that when I was good and hot. So I pull on them like that, so I've checked them. And I had one batch I pulled on, and I could pull them off. I threw some of them in my tackle box. That's what I was fishing with today. And one of them come off on me today. All right, there you go. Y'all want to see the, this was the fluke I shot. Okay, the video is not about the fluke, but I shot it. While I was making some, I might as well make a bag of flukes too. It only makes one bag with five, with, uh, five left over, right? Okay, there's the fluke. That way y'all get to see the fluke too, huh? All right, maybe we need to make a video with me. I need to hold on to these and make a video with the fluke. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? All right, maybe we can make a porter catch with the flute next time or just a fun video with it. All right, there you go, guys. If you want to get a hold of some of these, um, put your number down. By Wednesday at 5 o'clock, Wednesday after 5 o'clock, I do the draw. I hit a random number. As I showed you last week, you don't know what's going to give us. It, gives, it just gives us a number. <laughs> Who knows? And uh, We'll take whoever comes the closest to that number without going over the number. That's the only criteria we have. You can't go over the number, you win, okay? And uh, email me your address when I comment to you, hey, you won. 
Email me your address, guys. If you've ordered from me within a four weeks, I can find your address. But if you hadn't, I gotta go through all the all the orders. I gotta go online. I can type your name in sometimes, and it show up. I done that with the guy that won this week. It says not available, no such customer. I went, yes, it is. I know he's ordered from me, so he sent me his address. But I went back looking, and I had to go back. I think today it said it was 42 or 43 pages of orders. Yeah, on the internet. I had to go clean back to February. I take some time looking at each order, and I found his address. Yep. So, yeah, that's why I asked you to email it to me. It saves me a lot of headache trying to trying to find it, guys. And I'll mail that to you as soon as I can. Usually on Fridays. Today's Friday. He didn't get mailed to because I didn't get his address. And I didn't find it till this evening. Okay, a little bit ago. It's it's after three. I found it about two o'clock. So, uh, he and I, and I done been to I done been uptown. I done been to the Mexican restaurant, guys. <laughs> I grew up and eat dinner on Fridays, and that's usually when I mail out your package. So get that to me. I'll get mailed out to you. Good luck to everybody. Uh, appreciate y'all's comments. Y'all make good comments. I try to answer every one of them. YouTube sometimes, I noticed this this morning. I commented back to somebody in the last two days on the video. And sometimes it'll give me a little thing that says uh, comments that I haven't answered. And I clicked on that just a minute ago before I came out here. Half an hour, 45 minutes ago. And it gave me two names that I know I've answered. It said like two days ago, I know I answered them. I recognize the names. Sometimes when I hit reply, and it, when I'm done commenting, sometimes it doesn't plaster. I've seen it before, buffering. It's buffering. I go on to the next comment, and I went back and checked for it. It's still buffering. I don't know, guys. Sometimes it, they just don't take. And I'll have to do it again. So if, I, if, you didn't, if you didn't get commented back to, that's what happened. The YouTube, uh, the Internet, somewhere along the line. Didn't let it come to your computer. It could not be, might, might not be my computer. I got a high speed internet. You might have low speed internet and you're on there doing something. So it didn't let it show up. Or something. I don't know. Who knows how it works. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work. That's my point. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Appreciate y'all guys. Dennis. Hey, I'll see y'all Wednesday night. All right, Colin, mother, where you take me? All right, guys. Last time I was out was Tuesday of this week. And the fishing was easier than it has been. And I've done pretty good. Y'all have done seen one of the videos. That's a baby. And I'm in the back of the creek. I'm in the creek I live on. I'm on the back of it. And I was in the back of the creek that day, and i done good. So I thought, you know what, this morning, let's get back out here. We need to make a video for next Wednesday. Following Wednesday, let's get out there so we can catch them in the back of this creek. Uh, there's a high school tournament going on tomorrow, so the public boat ramp there. I can see the cars through the trees there. It's packed. And I know Holly Grove will be packed, so I thought this would be, I put in at our ramp in our subdivision. But I can tell you already this morning, they're scrappy scattered. They are moving to the back of the creek. I've seen some at the bridge up there. They wouldn't bite me, wouldn't pay attention to me. Uh, there's a lot of shad. I mean, shad were riffling the surface when it was calm this morning. They were riffling the surface. All right? But they're not easy to catch again today. They're falling in all that kind of stuff uh supposed to have bad weather this evening sometimes guys i believe the weather plays a lot of big role in why these fish act and they feed up at night a lot and this time in the morning they've been eating all night and they're not interested that's a lot of it but i've got to go when i have time to go <laughs> i gotta go when i have time to go fishing i can't say well i'm not gonna fish in the mornings the calm thunderstorms this evening i gotta fish this morning so i went downsized so let's see if we can catch a couple more in a smaller bay. I got a tadpole junior. He ain't no bigger. And there's some bigger marks under there. Yeah, I got my butt to the deck now, guys, at the boathouse. That's just a deck. It ain't a boathouse. He's not any bigger. Well, that's a good thing to see, though. That means that spawn had been good last year before last. That's probably two-year-old fish. Three at the most, right? I'm going to turn my boat around here. I've just cast them underneath there. I, I can show you all. There's quite a few there. There's probably a hundred there. Yeah. Probably the most I've seen this year in one spot. Well, start over. It's the most <laughs> retake. It's the most I've seen since about uh, June or July. You know, right after the spawn. The spawn here is in April. May, they pile up on docks after the spawn. And I mean hundreds by the hundreds. Uh, by the time Sam came down, it was first of June. They was piled up on docks. They've been on docks through July. August, 
they started acting different the first of August. Some of them was on docks. Some of them just started roaming open water more. And I didn't fish for their three for three weeks, guys, because I worked on this boat, which I'm not done. The other colors still hadn't come in. And I worked on my house. I'm painting my garage this week. I painted my house. Last two days, I've been painting on my garage. I almost got it done. My garage is not that big, guys. It's uh, 30, 24 by 30. And uh, so that dirt time, I didn't fish. And during that time, they've changed on me. I said, I've said this a hundred times. So I'm trying, I know some people don't watch every video. You notice the, day, the length of days are changing. That's changing everything. You could have came right here two weeks ago, a week ago, and there's no, there were no fish here. I've seen fish around that bridge. There was not around that bridge. Okay, You can only find a decent fish in this creek. Uh, a whole creek, you get to go to the main lake to start finding fish. They suck them back up in this main creek now. Like I told you, the first clip, I seen so many shad around that bridge this morning. I stopped at that bridge because there's so many shad there. And they were just riff riffling the surface. Y'all seen that before. And there was pods. I could, you know, so many of them. That's why they come to the back of the creeks this time of year. And they'll stay in the creeks now until the water gets cold, too cold for them. Then they'll move to the channel. Boat houses just a holding place. They're holding, when they're back in these creeks, they're holding brush piles, stumps. Some of them were, open, the bigger crap, they were run open water. And that's what I was looking for this morning. So I see a few fish, like see here? There's one right there. I don't know what all of them are, but that's how they were at the bridge. And I threw out a bunch of them, and they didn't pay any attention to me, but they were moving a lot. It's hard to keep my bait in front of them. That's the trick, too. you got to find something in open water that's not moving as much. And I'm kind of looking on some stumps here now. So here's a drop-off, and there's a couple of fish on it. So we'll see. Uh, I'll play around with some of those too, see if I can find some bigger fish. I might catch one more off this dock. I've seen some bigger marks there. And uh, just see if I can find a bigger one. Then I'm going to leave. I'm not going to stay here with those six-inch fish. Damn, I left that dock, guys, as you can see. Like I told you, I was going to try to find some bigger fish. I went back past it one more time, and uh, they followed me a little bit. Same old thing they've been doing for weeks. Now I'm just running around here. I've seen all kinds of fish. There's no size to them. He's about nine inches. A little bit bigger than the other two. Finding bigger fish can be tough sometimes this time of year. Uh, you, here, you can see now. Look here. I'm in 14 foot. I'm on a point. You can see there's fish everywhere. I can't turn. I'm turning this handle right here, guys. For y'all new guys. My, that's where my scope is. That's where my transducer is. And look, I'm going back this way now. There's some right there. See them scattering? And I think most of them are small fish, but I, look at them, they're everywhere. And they've been like that. I started over here, made a circle. And they've been like that everywhere. But a lot of them will not pay any attention to you. A lot of them are small fish, I think. I might have to move around here, keep on until I find some bigger fish. Bam. All right, guys, I moved. I told you I was going to keep fishing. I moved, I went down the bank. This fish was in open water. I'm running down a steep bank. You can see I'm in 22 foot of water. There's some brush down on the bottom there. But this fish was up on top. He wasn't but a couple feet deep. Oh, I broke my tail. I poured some the other day. He's not that big. I poured some of this color the other day, and I didn't do a very good job on them. I didn't get it hot enough. And I picked a couple of them up and that's in that mold, and the tail broke off of them. So you know what I've done? I put them all in my tackle box. <laughs> that's right. And I went back and I re-poured uh, some because I needed some to buy. I went back and we poured 10 more. I didn't shoot 10 at a time. I went back and shot 10 more and replaced the ones that uh, was bad. And I went through there and pulled on every one. Like I say, sometimes if you don't get it hot enough, that tail will break off. But that's the first time I had trouble with that. And that was my fault because I hadn't made any for a long time. It's probably been three or four months that I've made some to tail color. And I just didn't get it hot enough. It's got to be hot enough so when it goes in there, it melts to that tail. And you can look at it and see. Uh, if it done a good job or not. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know how much that y'all got. I cut my camera on and I heard it cut off. Uh, I'm telling you, somebody commented the other day when I said something about the GoPro. Somebody else commented, yeah, I know, I've tried it. And uh, I haven't been having that much trouble with it, with this uh, the seven this lately. Till the other night when I was bit, uh, making the uh, winner's video, that's the first time I've had any ma a major problem with it. And uh, 
I don't know. So I used to, I got three cameras and I've used all three of them. Now, my five right now I can't use. I don't have any batteries to fit it. The last battery went busted. The little pull tab that pulls the battery out, pulled off. And once that happens, you gotta take your pocket knife and get it off. If you bust that battery in the camera, it probably ain't no good. So I've, I'm not using it anymore right now. And uh, I've gotta order some stuff anyway. I need to order for that 10. That's a nice crappy, guys. All right, I'm gonna stick this in front of the outro, guys. Uh, I caught one over there, a nice one too, like that on that bait, but I think my camera didn't get it. That's why I went on used to here. I'm still in the same creek. I'm just kicking around. I ran, I run far as y'all can see. I run with my trolling mud to here. I haven't started them out, boy. Just running and looking with my live scope, and I'm seeing plenty of fish, but they're mostly they're they're small. I guess I might have found one a little bit bigger. I think I did. Bam. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what, they're, they're scattered here everywhere. And they're shad everywhere. I'm seeing shad everywhere too. Oh man, he decided he wanted it too. Yeah, there's shad everywhere also. All right guys, we're gonna... Most of the time when I go in and make a video, guys, I have so many clips I can't use them all. And I'm gonna try to quit doing that. I need to start counting my fish. <laughs> Sometimes I'll grab like, oh my gosh. I got 12 fish on that, in this video. Oops, let me get y'all here where y'all can see. I'm sorry. I, put, I turn my camera down some so y'all can see the fish coming at the boat. See the rod? I do that on purpose. Sometimes when I get to the boat, I got to lean back and I got to make sure I'm holding the fish in front of the camera. When you're holding him close, it doesn't take much to change it. Yeah, that's a decent fish. He might be 11 inches. He's either size. He might be 11 inches. He's in that area. All right, guys. I'm going to see if I can catch one more for this video. I think that's four. Uh, this is the... Oops. He, I busted my bait with the pliers, guys. Pliers are hard on baits. Especially those those lock. I'm going to go ahead and take it. That's why I busted. I got more. I know the guy that makes them. Um, I, know, I say that and laugh at myself. Sometimes, guys, I don't have that many baits in my boat. I dig around looking for something can't find it. I can't carry everything I make with me. But what I'm going to film with, I usually put a handful in my bag, like a 10 different colors I think I want to film with. Then I come out and let the fish decide which one I'm going to use. That's right. I've come out and say, I did that this morning. I came with the bait this morning. I ain't got nothing on that bait yet. And I might be coming out tomorrow morning and slam on it. You, you know, you got to find what they're interested in. This morning, this tail helped. I think the shark tooth helped this morning. The other bait had no shark tooth on it. When I went to this one, bam. This is called candy. Yep, candy. And it's azure, blue, okay? That's azure color in the front. It's not It's not blue, boys, azure. It's got silver, black, and red flake in it. Yep, it's got red in it. And this is just a chartreuse tail with real, real fine flake in it. That's 008. 008 is like adding dust to something, guys, but it gives it a little shine, a little glitter, okay? A little bit. That's what it, that glitter does. It gives it some shine. All right? It's a superstar. All right, guys, look. This is a port of catch. Bam, I let it out of the bag. This is the port of catch. So y'all know what to do, one to 400. I make that video on, uh, uh, load that video on Sundays, I'm sorry. I'm making it today. I'm everywhere this morning. Y'all ever get like that? I've been like that a lot lately, I don't know. I think I'm trying to do too much. I got too many orange in the far. I'm figuring jobs up. This last night I figured on a job for a screen porch and then I called a customer about a paint job and then I'm working on my boat for a while and I was painting on my garage yesterday. Yeah, I had that many things going yesterday. Um, Sundays I load the video. Wednesday evening around 5 o'clock. Usually at 5 o'clock if I'm home, I, and most time I am, 5, 4 after 5, I gather up my goodies, computer, everything I need. I go downstairs and I start it. Have your number in by 5 o'clock on Wednesday evening. If you put it in at quarter after 5, 20 after 5, it's not going to happen because I'm down there already at, uh, filming, okay? And I load that video on Thursday morning. I got to sit down Wednesday night and edit it. That's why I got to do that. I got to send it to YouTube. All that takes time, guys. You see what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all guys. Check it out. Fishing Lake Country. And check out Lake Country Baits. Uh, there's candy color in there. I just made some uh, a couple weeks ago because I was low on it. That candy color comes in the fluke, willow tail, tadpole junior. Okay, there's there are tail colors, and there's like uh, 12 of those tail colors. 
And guys, I sell quite a few of them. And I don't want to let the secret out of the bag, but I send a bunch of them to another state. There's one state, good ways for me, that buy a lot of the tail colors. And it's by three different guys. So I'm not going to tell you who they are. I don't want to give up their secret. But they're catching fish on them. <laughs> they want to be buying them. And so they buy four and five bags at a time of the same color. So I know they're either guiding, they've got a big family, or they're using them a lot. Uh, you, you catch... You can catch most of the time five to ten crappie on the same bait, guys, and more. I had a guy talk, tell me here a while back he caught 30 on one bait. It depends on your pliers. Yeah, the pliers is hard on them. If you hook them in the lip and you ain't got to dig for that bait, you can catch a bunch on them. Okay? Now, the tail colors, these little baits, I had uh, this area right here, too. There's a lot of sunfish spawning around right here. I had one pulled off, but it didn't pull off where I... Let me show you all. They bit it off. See, it didn't come apart where I made it. They can come apart sometimes where I melt them because I shoot it at 350 to melt into that tail. I make the tail separate. And I've had one come off on me before, but very, very seldom. Most of the time, that's what happens. That's because the sun perch grabbed the tail only, and I thought I had a bite, and I popped it. Yeah. And when I popped it, he had it in his mouth, and it broke it. That's what happens. You know? It ain't going to take you. If the fish is cramped down on it, and you jerk it, it's going to break it, guys. If I feel like a sunfish, I don't even set the hook. You know, feel that pick, 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 them little pecks. But a lot of times, crappy has a soft bite too. So, you know what I'm saying? You just got to make a decision, don't you? Appreciate y'all guys. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find a couple more here somewhere. If I catch another decent one, I'm going to throw this cold a little bit more. I'll stick it in front of this. I've done that many a times. No big deal. Y'all probably wouldn't even know that if I didn't tell you. <laughs> All right, guys. See y'all Wednesday night.